Hey, what's up? Phil here with VideoSchoolOnline.com and OnlineCourseMasters.com. Today, Udemy announced the launch of the new Insights feature on Udemy, and I want to walk you through it. This is a great tool for any teacher who wants to get more information about what a potential course could make in terms of revenue, whether they should make that course or not. So if you log on to your Udemy account, you'll see that there's this new Insights tab at the top of your instructor dashboard. There's a search bar where you can search for any topics. They also give you some promising topics down below. So let's just go ahead and click on one of those and I'll walk you through what this means. So let's click calligraphy to see what that says. So you click on a course or you search for a course and then it gives you at the top the opportunity overview. So you can look at this information and see that on the left it shows that student demand is average the number of courses on the platform is low. And so those two things combined basically tell you whether or not you should create this course or not, or at least if it has a good chance of selling on the platform. So this is actually a decent opportunity. Of course, if student demand was high and the number of courses were low, that would be even better. On the right hand side, you have the median revenue, which is basically the middle revenue for the typical calligraphy class. And then the top revenue. Now this particular topic doesn't have a top revenue, we'll go into another topic and see what the top revenue is for a different topic. Then down below we have the student demand, so a little bit more data in terms of the popularity of this topic. They give you the percentile, which is basically how much this term has been searched for compared to all the other topics being searched for. So something in the 90th, 95th percentile is being searched for a lot compared to something in the 10, 20, 30. So anything below 50 might not be something that has a lot of demand. Over here on the left, one of my favorite features of this is the top search keywords. This is great not only for coming up with course topics, but also naming your courses. And what I've seen from doing a little bit of research so far is that people really aren't searching for specific topics within a subtopic. So for example, most people who are looking for calligraphy are searching for calligraphy. They're not searching for calligraphy for beginners. They're not searching for calligraphy course. They're not searching for the complete calligraphy course. So this gives us a sense of exactly what we should be using in our course titles, descriptions, and making our courses keyword friendly. You have the search volume trend, which is another graph that shows based off of the past five months, how trendy this topic is. So ideally you'd want something that is going upwards. And then over on the right hand side down below, you have other topics of interest. This is really cool so that you can actually search for topics. What I would do is go in, search for topics of your own and see what other courses that those students are interested in. Perhaps this is something you could teach and cross promote to your current students. Down below you have your enrollments per channel. So this is where people come from to enroll in this class. I think that something that comes from Udemy Discovery or Udemy Search is good. If it's coming from a lot from outside sources, that means that you might have to promote this course a little bit more. And we're going to have to compare this data to other topics because it's hard to just look at this data and say, okay, well, this is a good course or not. Conversion rate, this is really interesting. So this is what percentage of students who purchase the course after showing up on the landing page. And this is amazing data because this can help us, it basically proves to us that we can or we should be sending traffic to our landing pages. If 5% of people convert after visiting a landing page within 90 days, that means if we send a thousand students to a landing page, 50 people are going to buy that course. I think that's right, 50, right? Yeah. So that is an amazing number to know just so that you can start doing your own marketing like we all should be, which is content marketing um, and all kinds of other marketing and promotion ourselves to get people onto that landing page. So this is great data. They say that the insight is that a conversion rate of lower than 5% um, might mean that there's just not the right course yet. So if it's a low conversion rate for this topic, you might have a good chance of getting a better class in there that actually boosts that conversion rate. 
And then down below, they give you the existing course data for this topic. So the listed courses in this topic, which is really low for uh, this, this topic. And then you have your course courses rated above 4.5% or 4.5 stars. What's really interesting about this too is that the enrollment's going to a highly rated course. So if 90% of enrollments are going to a course that's higher than 4.5 stars, that means you definitely need to create a course that is that high. Let's look at another couple uh, topics to see what this means in more detail. So let's pick something really popular like Microsoft Excel. So if you type in a different topic, you'll see different topics pop up. Now, not every single topic is going to be on here. And if it's not on here, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not a worthwhile topic, but it means that there's just not courses in that category or they don't have that category. So for Excel, you see that, wow, top revenue for the top Excel courses. These are the top, um, I don't know exactly how many, but it has more information here. But this, these are the top courses on this topic, which you see below, are making on average six, over $16,000. But the median revenue is $27, meaning there's a lot of courses not making that much money. The student demand is high and the number of courses is high, meaning that it ne it's not necessarily a bad course to teach, but you're not filling a gap in the market. If the student demand was low and the number of courses was high, then it's definitely not a course you should be teaching. But if both are high, if student demand is high, I, I personally feel like there's always room in the market for your own courses. Of course, it would be better if the number of courses were lower. The search volume percentile for this course is 99th, so it's the most popular topic uh, compared to all the other topics. The search volume trend, it's kind of similar to the other topic, the calligraphy topic. I'm wondering if this is just overall data, which might mean, or it shows that January was a very popular month on, on Udemy. For top keywords, so you see Excel being 29% of the people who buy this course um, search for this. So that's good to know. And then you have your other topics of interest. Here you see that the outside sources information is a little bit lower. So that's to me a good sign. Conversion rate is 4.6. So it's pretty close to five. So not much room in there, but 5%, it seems like that's kind of the standard or that's like the gold standard for Udemy. They want a 5% conversion. So again, that is just an awesome data point to have. So I'm really thankful to Udemy for sharing this with us. You see the existing courses on Excel. We've got 443 courses um, in in Excel, so that's a a lot. 25 only 25 percent of the courses though are rated 4.5 stars or above, and 60 percent of the enrollments go to those 25 percent. So this is another data that you should be looking at. If there's a low percentage of courses rated above 4.5 stars, but a high percentage uh, percentage of enrollments going to those courses then that's, I would say, again, room for another course in that topic, another epic course in that topic. So let's look at a topic that I'm actually currently interested in teaching. So let's look at Adobe Illustrator. Let's see if that's on there. Yep, Adobe Illustrator. So demand is high, number of courses is high, median revenue is $51, top revenue 25 or a little under $2,500. So one way you can look at this is that well, if the median revenue is $51, well, that's per month, that's going to be about $600 per year. So at the very least, if you want to be a full-time instructor, you have to make median courses, the number of median courses times however much you need to make per year. So if you needed to make $40,000 a year or $50,000 a year, you can kind of use this to gauge how many courses you might need. But obviously you would hope to be making better courses that get the top revenue or above the median revenue, but it's kind of a good model to use or just a good number to have. I also want to look at one course that I already have just to see what's out there. So let's look at Adobe Premiere Pro. So the student demand is high. The number of courses is high. The top revenue is 3,400. So this is where I would look at my class and I would see okay, how much money am I making? Am I in that top revenue spot? 
Then I would go down to the bottom and I would see what are the top courses in this category. And I would see, okay, is my course rated 4.5 stars or above? Yes, it is. I actually have two. I have the Premiere Pro CC course and the CS6 course. The CS6 course is only rated 4.2, but now the CC course is the most popular course uh, in Premiere Pro, at least right now. And so this would tell me, okay, do I need to recreate this course or not? Right now, it shows that I don't need to recreate the course because my course is doing really well. Another interesting note is that if I look up wedding videography or photography, so this is a topic that I have a course on as well that I co-taught. Here, the student demand is average and the number of courses is low. So that would say that there is opportunity to create a course. So if you're a wedding photographer, you should be creating a course. Top revenue isn't that much, so it's not that popular of a course on Udemy. And that probably matches the volume percentile down here on the left. But if we go down below, what's really interested, interesting is that courses rated above 4.5 stars, there's only 42%. And the enrollments going to those 4.5 or above courses is only 28%. And what's interesting is I think my this course is like 4.4 something. So it, even though it says 4.5 right here, I think it's a little under 4.5. So I think it's being counted in this enrollments going to highly rated courses, meaning that a lot of enrollments are going to my course, but it's rated below 4.5 stars. So this is a situation where I look at it and I say, okay, well, I could redo this course, but it's already making, you know, the top revenue, top typical revenue on Udemy, and it's still getting a lot of enrollments based off of what I see here. So is it worth recreating this course? For me, at least at this point, I look at this and I see the the top revenue and I would say probably not because most of the enrollments are going to 4.5 or below courses anyways. If it was the opposite, if I had a course that was right under 4.5 and most of the courses enrollments are going to 4.5 star or higher courses, then I would say, okay, now it's time to, to update that course. So anyways, that's a lot of data. It's a lot of numbers. This is just a really exciting thing for us instructors to have this data. I think it's going to inspire a lot of people to go on a mad dash of creating courses, which it should because this really gives us more data into what topics are worthwhile or not. So what I would say to you is to go into this, look at all of your own topics, this is what I would do. I would see other topics of interest here and just look at, hey, are there any topics I can teach? They have these little stars right here that mean that it's a trending topic or it's one of the topics that they suggest just actually creating. There's a gap in the market. So, so for example, real estate photography. I know there's only a couple courses in real estate photography, but the demand is high and the number of courses is low. I think there's only two courses in this topic and they are not taught by the, by the same teacher, but the percent volume percentile is 69th. So there's definitely an opportunity. So look at those little stars to see if that's a perfect topic for you. So those little stars mean great opportunities. So first look at your own topics and then just look at potential topics that you're thinking about teaching. This is another way to validate your course idea without having to survey students, without having to do anything, they give us this data right here. So thank you so much, Udemy. I am so excited about this. Everyone else watching this, you should be really excited about this because it can really take our course creation and marketing to, to the next level. Because remember, we can now see the top keywords that are being searched for, for people that end up buying the course and use those really use those in our courses so anyways just excited over here phil ebener from videoschoolonline.com and onlinecoursemasters.com have a great day and we'll see you in another video